What up YouTube, Case Most Primary, back at you with another video. Um, this is a type of video that I haven't done in a while because, solely due to the fact that I've been a little bit behind on this uh, type of situation, but um, I figure now, better than never, I get it done, so here we go. Um, I'm going to be giving my predictions for an event that's happening tomorrow night. I'm hoping this video gets uploaded in time. Uh, right now it's 11.31 on Saturday. Uh, so hopefully I can get this video up, done, up and loaded in time for the thing tomorrow night. So I'm going to be giving my predictions for the WWE 2014 Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Now the Elimination Chamber, as many of us know, is the final stop on the road to WrestleMania. And this year's WrestleMania is pretty important because everybody knows this year is the 30th WrestleMania. Um, picks it pretty much at, right after the Royal, the Royal Rumble left off. Um, pretty much determines who's going to be fight, fighting in the main events, who's going to headline it, who's going to take it all, face it all on the grand stage. Um, but the main point of the Elimination Chamber of pay-per-view is the Elimination Chamber match, which takes a few aspects from other structure-like matches, like the War Games matches, Steel Cage, Hell in a Cell, yada, yada, yada. Uh, basically, it is, for those of you guys who don't know what the Elimination Chamber is, it is a circular cage-like structure, which is actually made of chain-link fences, and four surrounding pods. Uh, one superstar is placed in each pod, and two start in the ring. Every 90 seconds, a superstar is released, and you are eliminated from the match when you are pinned or submitted. And as of the 2013 pay-per-view, uh, pins and submissions must be in the ring. It can't be on the elevated floor inside of it. And there's usually at least one Elimination Chamber match per pay-per-view of Elimination Chamber, sometimes two. And sometimes it's for a title or number one contendership. Uh, this year... Uh, I'll get to that when I get to it. So, the first match on the card is Darren Young versus Titus O'Neil. Um, I realize that's not actually the first card. I'm just reading the list off Wikipedia as of right now. Uh, now, this match was announced just a few weeks ago. Um, some time ago, um, I haven't missed a couple of SmackDowns, so I apologize for that. But some time ago, the primetime players, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, apparently split up. Uh, Titus O'Neil got sick of Mr. No Days Off. Uh, and those two started to dispute, so now they are rivaling against each other at Elimination Chamber. Uh, this isn't the first time it's happened either, where several tag teams have gone up against each other. I mean, did you see last year's Royal Rumble with Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust? Look at them now. They're partners. Um, I didn't really care much for the primetime players. Um, granted, I did see them when I was at Hell in a Cell, but I didn't really care much for them. Um, so really, I'm just calling it down the line. Um, if I had to favor somebody, probably be Titus, because... Tyus just seem like the bone that's a bit more professional, and also, he's not gay. And neither am I. So, yeah. Um, now, for the actual pre-show, I'll just kind of give these off in that order. Uh, Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust, better known as the Brotherhood, versus Ryback and Curtis Axel, a.k.a. Rybaxel. Now, Rybaxel is, kind of, is, again, the, the team of Ryback and Curtis Axel. Um, they kind of formed sometime after Hell in a Cell, maybe before Survivor Series. Um, when uh, Curtis Axel f officially stepped down, and Ryback also as well, stepped down as being Paul Heyman guys. But they still proved to, be, to each other to be pretty tough on the battlefield, so they kind of teamed up, and now they're fighting alongside each other in tag team competition. And uh, Cody Rose and Goldust, they've been on the streak for a while since, like, Night of Champions or something, or sometime in September when... The whole best for business thing kind of started that's going on in the WWE right now, which I'm hoping will end soon. Um, as we all know, Cody Rhodes got fired. Goldust fought for his job back, lost it as well, fell as well. In a tag team match at Battleground, got their jobs back, won the tag team titles from Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, retained at Hell in a Cell, and then lost them at the Royal Rumble against the New Age Outlaws. Um, so they've been on quite the winning streak. And the New Age Outlaws this coming. They've made their return since Old School Raw, uh, which was, I believe, the second Monday in January, I believe. I was watching, but I was not at home to keep, make note of the date. But all I know is that that's when they made their return, and they kind of challenged some tag teams like the Usos, Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust, um, Will Smith and Adores, a couple of tag teams, and apparently they earned a number one contendership to face, or earn a tag team title shot. They won, and now they're retaining. But uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust, I'm, they're probably my pick because they're probably the group that I'm most related to because 
Cody Rhodes was in the in, was in the first match I ever saw in WWE, and Gold Dust looks, looks pretty cool. Uh, next up, another one, kind of just picking up where I just left off on. Uh, the New Age Outlaws, the Road Dog Jesse James, and Badass Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws, versus the Usos, Jimmy and Jay Uso, in a title match for the Tag Team Championships. Now, the Usos have been kind of been gunning for the Tag Team titles for a while. Um, I think since, like, sort of, like Night of Champions they've been gunning for it in various uh, tag team tournaments. And they actually were in a triple threat tag team match for the titles at Hell in a Cell against Cody Rhodes and Goldust and two of the three members of the Shield. Um, in that match, they fell unfortunate when uh, I believe Goldust pinned. I think either Roman. I think he pinned Roman Reigns. But basically, the Usos lost, and they've been fighting for number one contendership ever since. Um, they had a chance, or Ryback or Cody Rhodes and Goldust defend or uh, defended against. Um, New Age Outlaws at Royal Rumble and lost, and then invoked their rematch clause one night later on Raw and failed, and then the Usos became the number one contenders. Uh, New Age Outlaws, no further con no further information. Everybody knows who they are. Um, I call that one right down the middle, but if I had to favor somebody, I'm for the New Age Outlaws. And if you're not down with that, I got two words for you. Suck it! I had to do that, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, New Age Outlaws. Now for another match that um, I don't really know that much about, but I'll go well along with. Biggie Langston versus one half of the Real Americans, Jack Swagger. And I only say the Real Americans because of the flag I have hanging on my wall behind me. Um, now this match was made, I believe, in a tag team match when the Real Americans face up against Biggie Langston. And I forget who was his tag team partner. Um, I want to say Mark Henry... But I can't remember who their tag team, how his tag team partner was that night. But in the end of that match, Jack Swagger was successful in pinning Biggie Langston, which immediately put him in the running for the Intercontinental Championship, of which he won from, I believe, Curtis Axel. Yeah, Curtis Axel was the one he won it against. It was on uh, Raw one night, uh, about a couple months ago, in which Co Biggie Langston won his first title in the WWE. Um, he had a U.S. title match at Hell in a Cell, but again, won only by disqualification because of the shield, so he didn't retain or earn it. So unfortunately for him, he got the shaft. Um, I'm for Big E in this match. I mean, as much as I like the, the Real Americans, I mean, I think it'd be better if Jack Swagger went for the United States Championship, because that kind of makes sense. So that's really all I can say. So gentlemen, if you would, Sam straight and tall, put your hand over your heart, and in a loud, clear voice, repeat with me, we... The people. That's over. Um, another one. Now, this is a match that I thought would be pretty exciting ever since this guy made his return. Alberto Del Rio, Mexico's greatest import, the Demo the aristocrat, whatever, versus the animal, Batista. Now, Batista, he we heard he was going to make his return sometime on, I think, on um, the Christmas edition of Monday Night Raw. I think that's when we heard of his return. Might have been Old School Raw. No, it wasn't Old School Raw. It was, uh... Yeah, Christmas Raw. Um, he made his return that day and then was announced later that he would partake in the Royal Rumble, in which he won and is now going to face whoever the World, WWE World Heavyweight Championship is at the Elimination Chamber at WrestleMania in the main event. Uh, Del Rio's mainly been going on about him being, like, all bark and no bite. Like, he says he's an animal and, like, he's all tough, but he never shows it in the ring. So... This prompted Batista to attack him, and Triple H told him, You want Alberto Del Rio? You can have him at the Elimination Chamber. So that led to the match. I'm for Batista. I've had it up to here with Del Rio. He pisses me off. So, I'm for the animal. Uh, now for a match that I personally have been waiting to see since July. The Wyatt Family, Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper... Versus The Shield, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. Now, this was a match that a lot of people wanted to see eventually. I mean, I knew we were going to get it eventually. Some people thought we were going to get this match at Survivor Series. Some people thought maybe at TLC. Or even Hell in a Cell, but no. Um, apparently, this all led up when uh, The Shield lost a three-on-three -three tag team match against John Cena, Sheamus, and Daniel Bryan to see who could participate in the Elimination Chamber. Um, Cena, Orton, or Cena, Bryan... And Sheamus won because of disqualification, and or count out, I forget, one of those two stipulations. And apparently the Wyatt family got to them saying that they can't win the big one, and they can't hold their own. So they set up a match between the two of them at Elimination Chamber. 
Now I'm kind of tossed down the middle about this because I'm when it comes to the two of them, I show loyalty to both. I follow the buzzards, and I'm one of the hounds of injustice. I believe in the shield, and they follow the buzzards. But if I had to favor one or the other, probably the Wyatt family because they haven't been as mischievous over the past year as the the shield has. I mean, I've seen the crap they have done. And now for the main event, which actually let me just go grab a specific prop that way I can. Put this into perspective for you here. Got it. The main event of the Elimination Chamber is obviously the Elimination Chamber match. And it pits John Cena, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, Antonio Cesaro, Christian, and of course, Randy Orton in an Elimination Chamber match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, as we all know, why are they saying both? I mean, are both titles being defended? Yes and no. For any of you guys who've been to the WWE since, or follow WWE since, probably around Survivor Series, you'll know that the TLC, there was a match where this title and the World Heavyweight title were unified as one because of a challenge issued by John Cena and a dispute over who is the face of the WWE. So in a TLC match, these two titles were united as one. The WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship were combined into one for one sole champion in WWE. And obviously, Randy Orton won. It's a shame, but it's happening. And Cena has had various matches with Orton since. Uh, he faced him at the Royal Rumble and unfortunately lost. Now he gets a shot at redemption again. And I've got things to say about various people in the WWE, about the other five contenders in the match. Um, Christian, I mean, everybody loves Captain Charisma, the one more match dealio. I mean, event, everyone loves to see him win the gold, and he's just a fan favorite. I mean, everyone loves him ever since Edge left. <sighs> I, miss, I miss him already. Cesaro, I mean, one half of the Real Americans. I mean, I thought that Jack Swagger was going for the Intercontinental title was bad. That's worse. Especially considering how bad Cesaro botched it when he had the U.S. title. That's going to be even worse. Sheamus, he's never held the WWE title. He's held the World Heavyweight title. He's been a U.S. champion. Um, I think he did pretty good. He had a good eight or six month run with the World Heavyweight title when he won it at WrestleMania against Daniel Bryan. Cena, I mean, he's won the title a bunch of times. He's an 11 time champion in the WWE, 10, 11 time WWE champion, three time World Heavyweight champion. He's just, he's done a lot. He's done everything. Daniel Bryan has only held three different titles and he's barely held the WWE title. So I think my money's on Bryan. Sheamus or Cena, one of those three. Um, Orton, someone's got to tame that Viper. And then, of course, after this, we are on the road to WrestleMania. No other pay-per-views until Mania. And based on some sources that I've heard, there is a potential possibility of The Undertaker returning this Monday night on Raw. This is based on a, com on a th thread I've read on Instagram on a certain channel I follow, but um, uh, that's just a rumor at this point. But I'm really looking forward to the Elimination Chamber, seeing all the results. Uh, one of my co-workers already has his order for pay-per-view. And also, you'll get to watch it for free um, once it becomes available on WWE Network if you've already subscribed for a membership. I haven't yet. I'm debating if I will or not, but um, I'm definitely saving my money for WrestleMania, which I cannot wait for. So I guess that's about it. Later, guys. I am out of here.